become a UX professional. Whether you're just getting out of college or thinking about a career change, I got you. These three tips should help set you straight. going on y'all welcome back to my channel i'm the neural and this is unpacked angles with me where we're focused on widening the perspective on all things ux and more and today we are talking about how to break into ux how to become a ux professional whether you're just getting out of college or thinking about a career change i got you these three tips should help set you straight tip number one know your why do you know why you want to get into ux is that reason strong enough to pull you through and motivate you on the toughest of days well everything is going wrong because <laughs> it will happen and your reason should be that strong ux involves working with a whole bunch of ambiguity so chances are things are going to go wrong <laughs> there's no avoiding that and it's all about taking what you learned from what went wrong and running with that so you got to be able to stick it through you have to know your why for instance my why I'm hell-bent on helping people for whatever reason, and I just happen to think tech is cool. So it'd be a cool way to do that. I got my master's in systems engineering so that I could learn to solve problems effectively, and then went to study nonprofit leadership and management so that I could solve those problems in the best way for the community. But clearly one of my superpowers is learning. Like I'm always learning something. I have a billion degrees for no reason, <laughs> but I'm always learning something I love to learn. And I'm likable, which sounds kind of funny, but it helps me to be a team player and establish one-on-one -on -one relationships with other people pretty easily. So knowing more about yourself, of course, is key to knowing your why to whatever you're doing, but especially for what you wanna go into for work. So if you wanna break into UX, you gotta know your why. Tip number two, evaluate what you've done so far so that you can apply it to whatever UX positions you're considering. So when's the last time you solved a problem? Do you solve problems on a regular basis? How do you go about solving problems? Do you know your process? If you don't, I would highly encourage you to take a step back the next time you go through solving a problem and write down what it is that you actually do. Do you do any research? Do you talk to people? Do you figure things out on your own? Are you working with a team? Like, What is it that you're doing to get to an answer for whatever it is that you're working through? In the UX job descriptions, there are gonna be roles and responsibilities, which are basic expectations of what these organizations are looking for from a person in this position. So it's gonna be really helpful for you to know how what you've done matches up to what they're expecting. How does it apply? Does it? you got to figure it out. When I was in management consulting, it was my job to listen to my clients, to ask questions and figure out what it is that they were having problems with, what their issues were in order to find and recommend solutions. That's UX right there, but that's not a UX design position or a UX researcher position. My title was management consultant. And I also had a couple of school projects that I did that I was able to include in my portfolio. Yes, I majored in engineering, but some of what I did and the roles that I played could have fallen under a UX position. So it could be super helpful and important to really understand where the crossover is between what you've done, what you're doing, and the UX position that you're looking to fill next. Knowing that will help you bridge the gap and it can also give you great speaking points whenever you find yourself talking to a recruiter or someone who's hiring for the position. But additionally, know what you haven't practiced know what you have not done. It speaks to your seriousness as a professional and also speaks to your knowledge of the field. Know different methods that you haven't practiced. Know when in the process to use those methods. Know what they mean. This will help you out exponentially. Also, know terms. Be able to speak the language. A good start, of course, is Google. There are a ton of resources out there. I've linked a few in the description below, and I'm also linking to a couple videos that I've done to help get you started. So know the language, know the methods, and know how what you've done applies. Tip number three, side projects. Do them joints, do them. I will highly suggest and encourage you, if you are able to, do some side projects, at least one. Find people to work with. It's better if you do it with people. <laughs> it's almost like seven times better. Local meetups are a great starting point if you don't already have people in mind who you wanna work with. If you're in school, join up with a classmate or two who might be interested. Colleagues around your neighborhood, at work, 
wherever. Put your feelers out there and see what you can get. You might even find somebody on Twitter. It's like the land of opportunity in addition to like a few other things on that platform. But, you know, reach out. Another way to get a side project started is doing one for free. So whether you want to go at this alone or with a few people, reach out to some organizations that might need your help. There are so many nonprofits out there who would love to have you help them out with their website because chances are if they don't have a dedicated website person, it's probably in need of a little help. So don't be afraid to reach out to organizations or small businesses on LinkedIn or like through their email who might be open to having you give them some help. You can also do your own projects. You can find a problem around where you work or where you visit frequently. So if you prefer to like tackle this side project on your own, feel free to do that as well. There are plenty of problems and different things in the world that can be revamped. So the world is literally, not literally, but the world is your oyster. I will say that that takes a little bit more discipline since you are the only one that's gonna be on your back about your work. But if you have that discipline, then feel free. I mostly did self projects and side projects for programs, which brings me to a bonus tip. So should you join an online program? Honestly, the answer is up to you. You really may not need to, but only you would know. Online programs can help you to establish your side projects for your portfolio. They also oftentimes help you with your portfolio as well. So if you feel like you do need that structure, then maybe an online program is for you. There is also the option of learning on your own, self-learning on online platforms like Skillshare or Udemy. You can learn on your own if you've got that discipline. So it's really up to you if you need more structure and aren't as great at self-learning and maybe don't have the discipline to do that, then you might wanna go with an online program. You would know yourself better than I would. So that is all I have for you today. I hope you found this video valuable and helpful. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions, any feedback, anything that maybe wasn't clear to you, definitely let me know. So if you like what you saw and you wanna stick around, come on this ride with me, please be sure to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna get notifications about when I post videos, you can hit that little bell too. I post every other Thursday, no, I post Wednesday. I post every other Wednesday. So I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. Peace.